Hi everyone, in this episode we're going to create simple biomes by dividing the planet into different coloured regions based on latitude. We'll then add some noise to make the boundaries more organic, and finally blend the colours together. Okay, so let's begin by going into the colour settings, and here I'm going to create a public class called Biome Colour Settings, and this is going to have a subclass called simply Biome, and the Biome is going to have a gradient, which will work the same way as this old gradient up here, where the colors are just sampled based on the elevation. So I can actually go ahead and delete this one, we won't use that anymore. And then I'm also going to have a public float for the start height of the biome. That will just be a value between 0 and 1, so I'll add a range attribute here, 0, 1. And in case we want to tint the biome with a solid color, I'm going to add a public color tint, and also uh, over here a public float, tint percent, which will again be a value from 0 to 1, so I'll just add a, another range attribute. Alright, the biome color settings will then have a public array of these biomes, just call that biomes, and then I want both of these new classes to be serializable, so I'll just add the system.serializable attribute over here and over here. And then the color settings class can have a public biome color settings, just called biome color settings. All right, I'll save that and go into the color generator script. And in here, we currently have this texture with just a single row containing all of the colors for the entire planet. But instead, I want this texture to have a height that corresponds to the number of biomes so that each row of the texture can store the colors for that biome. So I'll replace this with settings dot biome color settings dot biomes dot length. And currently this texture is only being updated if the texture is null, but we also want it to be updated if the number of biomes changes. So I'll say or the height of the texture is not equal to the number of biomes. Okay, let's then come down to the update colors method and I want to change the size of the colors array to take into account the new height of the texture. So I'll set this equal to texture.width multiplied by texture.height. And then I want to loop through all of the biomes. So I'll say for each var biome in settings.biomecolorsettings.biomes. Then inside of this inner loop, we can have a color, I'll call this the gradient color, and this can be equal to biome.gradient, and we can just evaluate it in the same way as we were evaluating the old gradient. All right, and I'll just delete this other line. And then we can have color tint color equal to biome.tint. And now I want to assign to our colors array, but we need an index for this. So just outside of both loops, I'll create an int color index, set that equal to zero. And then we can use that index here. This is equal to the gradient color multiplied by one minus biome dot tint percent. So if there's no tint, then the color will be entirely based on the gradient color plus tint color multiplied by biome dot tint percent. Okay, after doing that, we can then just increment the color index. Okay, I'm next going to create a new public method returning a float, and this is going to be called uh, biome percent from point. We'll take in a vector three point on unit sphere. So uh, this should basically return a value of zero if we're in the first biome, and a value of 1 if we're in the last biome, and anywhere between 0 and 1 are for the other biomes. So I'm going to start by creating a float height percent. So this should have a value of 0 at the planet's south pole going to a value of 1 at the planet's north pole. So I'll say point on unit sphere dot y uh, plus 1 divided by 2, since the unit sphere goes from negative 1 to positive 1. Okay, I'm then going to have a float biome index equal to zero and an int num biomes, which I'll set equal to 
settings, dot biome color settings, dot biomes, dot length. And then go to loop through the biomes. So for i equals zero, i less than number of biomes. And then I'll say if settings dot uh, biome color settings dot biomes with an index of i has a start height that is less than the current height percent, then I will set the biome index equal to i. Otherwise, I will break out of the loop. Now, I want to return this biome index, but I want to squash it in the range 0 to 1. So I'm going to divide it by the number of biomes minus 1, unless the number of biomes is 1, in which case we don't want to divide by 0. So I'll just take mathf.max between 1 and the number of biomes minus 1. So if it's 0, then we'll just use a value of 1 instead. All right, now for each vertex in the planet, we're going to want to calculate which biome it's in using this method here. And we're going to want to store that information in its UV channel so that that can get passed to the shader so we can use it to draw the correct color. So I'm going to save this and now open up the terrain face class. And I'm going to come down to the bottom here and create a public void called update UVs. So we'll take in a color generator, I'll call that color generator. And here I'll create a new vector to array, uv, equal to a new uh, vector to array with a size of resolution times resolution, which is the number of vertices. And then we're going to want to uh, loop through and find all of the points on the unit sphere. Uh, so we can just copy the code for that from here paste that in there. Uh, the reason that I don't want to put this inside of this construct mesh method is that I really want to keep all the stuff that generates colors separate from the mesh generation so that uh, when we're updating the colors, we don't have to wait for the mesh to rebuild since that can be kind of slow. All right, so here I'm going to say UV with an index of I is equal to a new vector two, and we can get color generator dot biome percent from point, and pass in the point on unit sphere. Now we currently don't have anything that we want to store in the y component of this vector, so I'll just give that zero. Okay, at the end of this, we should say mesh uh, dot uv is equal to uv. Now, when we uh, rebuild the mesh over here, we don't want to lose this UV data if we've calculated already. So up at the top of construct mesh, I'm going to say vector to array UV is equal to mesh dot UV. And then at the bottom here, after we've cleared the mesh, we can reassign that mesh dot UV is equal to UV. All right, let's save that and go into the planet script. And now coming down to generate colors, I want to loop through all of the terrain faces. So I'll just copy this loop from the generate mesh method, paste that in there, but instead of calling construct mesh, call update UVs, passing in the color generator. Okay, let's now save this and go into Unity. Once that finishes compiling, I'm going to go into the graphics folder and open up the planet shader. So in here, recall that what we're doing is figuring out the elevation of the terrain as a percent between 0 and 1, and using that as the x component of the UV for the texture. What we're going to do now is add a y component to the UV, which will be that biome percent that we calculated. So let's create a new node have this be an input uv, and we want this to be uv0. And then we're interested in the x component of this, so let's split it and take the x component and create a vector2. I want this to be connected to the y component of the vector2. And then we can connect this elevation percent to the x component, and then connect this to the uv of the texture. All right, I just want to neaten this up a little bit. So I'll 
uh, move this out like so. I think something like that looks okay. And then save that. All right, can now close this, go into the planet. I'll open up biome color settings. We're getting errors just because there are no biomes at the moment, but I'll add say two. And I'm gonna turn the tint percent up to one for both of these, just so that I don't have to fiddle around with the gradients at the moment. So I'll leave this first one as black, and this can maybe be red. And here we can increase the start height. So you can see that at the bottom we have the black biome, and at the top we have a nice red biome. I'll add in a third one. And I can increase the height of that. And so you can see I've now got I guess an upside down German planet. All right, now it's a little too obvious at the moment that we're breaking the biomes up just in these sort of uh, sections based on the latitude. So I need to add some noise to just disturb the boundaries a little bit. So I'll go into the color settings and here in the biome color settings, I'll add a public uh, noise settings class. Just call that noise. And then I'm also going to create a public float noise offset and noise strength. Okay, I'll save that, go into the color generator. And up at the top here, I'm going to create a eye noise filter. I'll call this the biome noise filter. And in the update settings method, I will just assign that. I'm noise filter is equal to a new, uh, how are we doing this again? We have a noise filter factory, uh, dot create noise filter, and we pass in the settings. So that is settings, dot biome color settings, dot noise. All right, then in the uh, biome percent from point method, we just want to disturb the height percent a little bit. So we can say height percent plus equals, and I'll say biome noise filter dot evaluate at the point on unit sphere. And then just to give us some control over how far the noise shifts the uh, biomes up and down and how strongly it does that, I'm going to subtract uh, settings dot biome color settings dot noise offset, put this all in parentheses, and then multiply that by the strength. So settings at biome color settings dot noise strength. All right, so now if we save that, go back into Unity, uh, wait for this to compile, also just clear these errors in the meanwhile. Uh, now we can open up the noise. I'll just use simple noise, maybe have two layers. And here we can increase the strength and we can play with the offset so that it doesn't affect the starting height of the biomes too much. Um, I guess this noise strength is a little strong at the moment. Let me turn it down to 0.2, and uh, we can maybe have another layer, just so we can get some finer detail, maybe increase the persistence a little bit. So I think that's looking a lot more natural, or at least it will once we blend the biomes together. So let's do this by going into the biome color settings and adding a public float blend amount and I'll make this in the range 0 to 1. Save that and come into this biome percent method and here I'm going to delete this code from inside the for loop because we're going to do this slightly differently. We'll start by calculating the distance uh, of the biome's start height from the current height percent so we can say uh, distance is equal to height percent minus settings dot biome color settings dot biomes the index of i dot start height. And then we're going to create a float weight, uh, which will depend on whether this distance is sort of within the range of the blending distance. So outside of the for loop, I'm quickly going to create a float blend range. This will be equal to settings.biomecolor settings.blend amount divided by two. 
And now the weight is going to be equal to mathf dot inverse lerp from negative blend range to positive blend range based on the distance. So just to explain this weight value a little bit, say we have this planet with a black biome and a red biome. So this is the starting height of the red biome. Then this might be the positive blend range and this the negative blend range for the red biome. So by doing this inverse lerp between the negative blend range and the positive blend range, we're saying that the red weight is going to be zero at or below the negative blend range line here, and the red weight will be one at or above the positive blend range. So coming back to the code, we can say that biome index gets increased by the index of the current biome multiplied by the weight of it. But then we don't want this biome index to get too large. So before we do that, we will multiply it by one minus the weight. So for example, if the weight was one, which would mean we'd want it to be completely the color of this biome, then this would start off by resetting the biome index to zero. And then we just add on the current biome index. Okay, now there's one small thing that I want to do, which is uh, onto this blend range, I just want to add a small value like 0 0.001. And that's just because uh, this bit of code here won't work nicely if the blend amount is zero. So by doing that, we just make sure that it's always at least a little bit greater than zero. Okay, so I can now save this, go back into Unity. And once that compiles, we should see our blend amount popping up here. And we can increase this to blend the colors together. Okay, so I'm now going to just create some gradients for the biomes so that my world starts off nice and green at the bottom and then transitions to a sandy region and finally an icy region. All right, now that we've got these simple biomes set up, that is going to be everything for this episode. So until next time, cheers.